The first of the three so-called structured system development methodologies is the classic waterfall de development methodology, where the project team proceeds sequentially from one phase to the next. You see the four phases here depicted as planning, analysis, design, and implementation. There are deliverables for each phase, formal documents that must be produced, that are voluminous and must be approved by the project sponsor before the development team can proceed to the next stage or phase. While it is possible to temporarily go backwards through the phases, for example, from design back to analysis, it's very difficult. This project is one in which the requirements must be clearly defined and understood all of the requirements in advance, the user requirements for the system, and they must be stable and unchanging. Before you do any sort of programming in the design and implementation phases, it's during the analysis phase where you hammer out all of the user requirements and complete that those documentations. A, com a disadvantage of this approach is that the design must be completely specified before any programming begins. Also, these projects tend to be quite long, and testing often it does not occur until you get into the implementation phase, and um, testing is sometimes kind of regarded as an afterthought. So this slide summarizes the advantages and disadvantages. System requirements must be clearly defined up front and they must be frozen. Those are both advantages and strengths. The system takes a long time to develop. That's clearly a weakness of this approach. Also, as we mentioned, testing often does not receive the attention that it should and only occurs during implementation. Now, the second so-called structured development methodology is this parallel de development methodology. And this is a variant of the waterfall approach and largely came about as an attempt to reduce the overall project length. And what, what, what you do in this approach, this methodology is, again, you go through a formal planning phase, produce those deliverables, go through a formal analysis phase, produce those deliverables, but then you produce what is just a general design for the entire system. You don't go into all of the design details for all of the subsystems sub-projects that are part of the overall system. Then, with this general design, you go into a more detailed design phase separately for all of the sub-projects that are part of the system. Cascade, continue on to implementation for each one of these sub-projects, and then integrate all of the sub-projects together in this implement, final implementation phase, and then you deliver the system. Now, by designing sub-projects or parts of the system in parallel, you speed up the overall process. So, the parallel methodology reduces overall project time compared to the classic waterfall approach. It also reduces the need for re rework because with a shorter time frame, longer time frame means that more requirements can creep in. So whenever you reduce the time frame, there's less chance of requirements changing. However, developing three sub-projects together requires careful design decisions, and integrating the projects, the sub-projects at the end can be difficult. Now, the third so-called structured development methodology. And all three of these are more similar than they are different. Is the so-called V-model development methodology. 
the model, its its claim to fame is that it integrates testing more thoroughly through all parts of the process. And by emphasizing testing more thoroughly, you generally get a better system quality. Now the V approach begins with a, begins with analysis. There's planning, of course. Then you go to analysis. And development proceeds down this left-hand side, the left-hand slope with a V. You define the requirements and analysis, and then you design system components. But note that when completing each one of these two phases, you have some sort of test process. After analysis, you have an acceptance test design. After design, you have system test, integration test, unit test. And then at the base of the V, the code is written. Here you implement the system with coding. And then you go up this upward sloping right-hand side of the V where you do even more testing. You do unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and acceptance testing. So you can see that the process of going through the phases, analysis, design, implementation, is largely the same, but you do various types of testing throughout the process. This results in better quality because of the testing. It's a relatively simple and straightforward approach. Again, you get better quality assurance. Again, in, in incorporating these testing intervals throughout, is it's a kind of rigid process. And if you're in a dynamic business environment where new requirements or perhaps new technologies emerge as you're going through this process, um, it can be difficult to use. It doesn't accommodate changes.